So I did a video not long ago about my uh, Honeywell Lyric DR6 thermostat um, for my heating system, my radiator system, and I was quite happy with it at the time. Um, but it's a single zone thermostat, meaning all your radiators rely on the one temperature sensor in the one room with the thermostat to call for heat. Um, so whether you're in all the rooms or not, you may only want to heat one room. Um, you may want different temperatures and different. It's really hard with a single zone. Obviously, your one um, real choice to limit the temperatures are going to be a TRV. But all that really does is limit how hot the radiator is going to get. It can only call for heat if the room with the thermostat is calling for heat. So if that room is below the temperature set on the thermostat, all radiators are going to call for heat. So you put a, if certain rooms are getting too hot, if the system isn't that balanced, you're going to put a TRV and you're going to set it on a number one, two, three, four, on the temperature uh, that you want to be the maximum in that room. But that room is below the temperature temperature that you want in that room. And the room with the thermostat is at the temperature, so it's not calling for heat. You're never going to be able to warm that room up. And that's the problem with a single zone. And of course, they're all relying on the thermostat for when it's time to come on and on, come and on, or on and off, if you're using um, the timed feature of that. So to me, the biggest problem is these the TRVs are so basic in how they control the heat. Basically, they're going to use wax or water to sense the temperature around the radiator. And of course, that's always going to be the hottest spot. If you've got a, a big room, you've got a problem because it's not going to sense the temperature on the other side of the room. It's around the radiator. These, I've got a, I had Bulldogs, which are wax based, and these are really, really popular. But here's the problem. So in a room that you're, you're going to be in, like in the living room, you're normally going to want it around 21. 21 is the recommended setting, but I mean, that's a comfortable setting. A little less, a bit more is going to be, all right, you know, to everybody's taste. But so the number three setting on the Bulldog is 19 to 21 degrees. So there's an error there of plus or minus. So basically it's, it's saying 20 degrees plus or minus one degree. So that's a three degree spread, which is, which is a lot. Um, three degrees centigrade spread. Um, to be too cool, too hot. Um, the number four, I mean, most of them have only five or six settings. The number four setting is 23 to 25. So spot that. Three is 19 to 21. Four is 23 to 25. If you want 22 degrees, you've had it. You can't, you can't set it. And number three could be limiting, limit, number three could limit your temperature to 19 degrees or 21. So it, from 19 degrees, it could shut it off. And if you t if it's not hot enough, you turn it up to four, it could go up right up to 25 degrees. So between three and four, and there's no half turns, between three and four, you've got a six degree spread, six degree centigrade. I mean, they really are terrible to, um, to you know, if you are fussy about your heating, which I am, if you're sensitive to heat, I mean, these are terrible. I mean, it's better than nothing, but they're terrible. So I wasn't happy. So... There is only one system out there right now that will individually control every radiator, giving you time settings for each and every radiator, and will be able to note. The problem with putting a TRV on all radiators is that if all radiators shut down because the TRV has hit its maximum, the boiler doesn't know that. And if the thermostat is still calling for heat, the pump is still trying to run, but it can't, it can't flow because none of the radiators are open. Um, yes, some, it's all as well. No, you should, st um, install a, an automatic bypass valve, which will help keep water flowing. So you're not going to get pump overheat. And you, most installers will leave, won't put a TRV on every radiator. They'll leave one as bypass just to make sure you can always get flow through the system. Um, but that means the one without the TRV, will always be on to maximum. So the thing about the Evo home system is that 
all the TRVs wirelessly connect to the base controller. So the base controller knows the state of each and every TRV. And if each and every TRV is shut down, it knows to turn the boiler off. So you're not going to get the, the pump trying to run when, the, when it can't actually flow through any of the radiators. In other words, and it's going to overheat because it can't, it's, the water isn't circulating. So it gets rid of that problem. As far as I know, it's the only system out there right now that does that. Um, and also, even if you don't use it in, a, in, a, in the whole system, even if you just get a TRV on its own, and it will work with, without uh, the, the, main, the main system, it will work as a normal TRV, just really expensive. They're like 70, 60, they're about 70 quid, about 70 pound, um, whereas these are about 15 quid. So very expensive, but you can set these in half degree increments. So you can set the exact temperature that you want to limit the radiator to. Um, just, just by turning that, you can set the temperature. I mean, the rich, so even without any of this, the main, the whole system, the whole wireless system, uh, you can still use it. And I still think um, it's the best thing out there. So you can set half degree elements rather than three degree spreads, uh, which is crazy. So that's that's why that's why I got it, and now I'm going to basically go through just um, how comprehensive this system is, and why it covers just about you know everything you'd want from from your heating system. Just how controllable it is. So I'll show I'll show you show you over each element there. So at the heart of the system, obviously, is the the main controller, um, and obviously, important is having a controller if you don't have a TRV. So you really want a TRV on each and every radiator if you're really going to get the best out of it, but you don't have to. I mean, at the end of the day, just put them on the radiator that you want total control of. You can still mix and match with the old style, uh, well, I say old style, this is kind of state of the art, but um, a normal TRV, you could still have that on other radiators. But I'd have to say, I mean, to really get the most out of it, um, get a TRV, get one of the Honeywell TRVs on each and every radiator. And they're not cheap. You're not going to get this system unless you're, you're going to spend a few quid. You know, you can reckon um, to move from a single zone to, if you've got a large house or whatever, if you've got a lot of radiators, if you move to several zones, you can reckon to save about 20%. Seems to be about the average on your fuel bills. So, you know, you're going to get something back over the years. But, so like, to get these on their own, these TRVs are about... 70 pound um, these are about 250 pound around this is a wireless unit and it can t connect straight to the wireless relay box at the boiler and uh, to your router for internet access the older ones used to have um, a remote access gateway so they had to have another standalone unit for the internet bit but with the new ones, you can do away with that. So that connects straight to your router and to your boiler via the um, wireless relay box. And you get that separate for about 250. You can get that with a package and five of these for about 500 pounds. Oh, I think they're about $650 uh, in the US. So one of these on each radiator, just turning the dial, gives you half a degree increments each time that you want to set your temperature. You can set these um, from the menu to either display the temperature of the room or the set temperature that you want the room to aim to be. Um, I like to have it to see what the room temperature is, but by default it's going to come as um, the set temperature. There are several things you can change in the menu. And one of them is also to recalibrate. I find these pretty accurate, I've got to say, unless you've got a, a really large room or the TRV is in an awkward place. Um, it may be covered behind curtains or something that's going to affect its reading um, within about half a degree. These are pretty accurate. I was really pleased with that. So so that's basically your basic system is your controller and your, your TRV, which of course incorporates a sensor. You have got a sensor also in the the unit, the controller itself. So 
you can use that like a normal thermostat where it's reading the temperature of the room and uh, you're setting your temperature to, to read from the thermostat. So for instance, if you set that say in your living room and you've got, a, a rec you got one of these on the radiator in the living room, the, the, the temperature that it's, it's aiming for is whatever you set on here and it's reading it from there. So if you've got, it, got this on the other side of the room, that's where the temperature is going to be read. So like in the middle of the room would, would be perfect. So each controller can handle up to 12 radiators. You can have more radiators, but then you've got to add another controller. I mean, that may well work out if you're doing over more than one floor. You know, if you've got three or four floors or something, something ridiculous like that, maybe you've got a hotel. Um, if you've got that many radiators, you can have like one of these on e each floor. And so I've got this set to six zones. Um, a zone being each wherever you've got one of these TRVs on, unless you happen to group your zones. For instance, if you've got a room with three radiators and you've got three TRVs on your radiator, you might in, uh, call that zone living room. And so you see living room on here, but actually that's controlling three radiators, or you can have them singly. The thing about this is, if you like to look at your display every so often to see what's going on, it's only going to give you the first six radiators or the first six zones on the screen. If you add more, so seven to 12 will be another screen. So you'd have to press something, a little arrow down there to go to the next screen. So I like to have everything on the main screen. But um, if you add more, it will be on another screen. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to go to your settings. Um, you've actually got to keep your your finger on the settings for five seconds to get to the main setup menu. Um, you know, you're in danger of explosion. Is it okay? So I'll say yes. So this is the way you set up your zones. There's actually two different places that do basically the same thing. You can go to zone configuration or you can go to add a zone. But the add a zone can also, um, if you're not careful, delete all your old settings. So I just keep to zone configuration. So you'd go into your zone configuration and you see you've got spaces for up to 12 zones or 12 TRVs. And you see each one, each little square has got a plus button and it's really easy. You just go in. So if you've just, if you've just put a TRV on a new radiator, you'd go in here, you'd click the plus symbol, you'd give that radiator a name, um, say test whatever. And then you can see, because this does underfloor heating and all sorts of things, it can control your hot water. But in this case, um, I'm adding a radiator valve. So just click radiator valve. And that's when you would bind it. So you'd go into your t to your TRV, you'd press this down, um, and it would come up and bind. So basically, that's, if you, well, it may go to, yeah, so it's gone to the main menu. So actually, I'll exit that. And that's what you've got to watch. That if you go, if you hold it down straight away, it'll go to the main menu. But if you click it once and then go uh, to the five second hold, it will then go to the binding. I'm not going to bind it, but that's what you would do. You'd then click that and then you'd see it come up there and it would say, okay. And this would now show the name that you've given it, but I'm not going to do that. So I just turn the top dial to exit and I, I exit that. But that's how easy it is to, to set up. Um, I need to delete that actually, don't I? So I'm going to delete that zone. So that's deleted. Um, and of course, if you've already set one up and you, you wanted to, to add to that zone, you come in here and you've got the option to add a, another radiator or another zone. And you can do it that way as well. So that's where you'd play around with all your settings. But the other thing you can do, now, if you really, really into your systems and you want it to be highly accurate, there are several things you can add. For example, this is a standalone temperature sensor. So I can put that anywhere in the room where it, you may have a cold spot. So I want that in the cold spot to read the temperature. And then I'd go to wherever the TRV was, if it's maybe my kitchen one, and then I'd change the temperature sensor to um, 
to this. Do I want to replace it? I would say yes. And then I'd bind that with that. And then that would mean that TRV, that zone, is going to read that for the temperature. And that just fixes on a wall. It's got batteries in. Everything here is wireless. And um, it will read that from your cold spot. Um, it's also a little, I find it a little bit more accurate. I mean, they, these aren't bad. They're pretty, pretty good. But um, I find these almost spot on. They do two types of these. And on this one, it's a straightforward temperature sensor. These are about 60 pound. And on the, on the other one, they have a little dial here where you can actually change the offset. So if you, for example, set the temperature to be 25, um, but it may be out of kilt with what you want, or you may just want to override what it is, what the temperature is, sen is sensing for that moment. And you can um, go plus or minus on the, on the dial by a few degrees uh, to, to, change, to change the offset. Um, so that's one of the things. But you can also, in local zones, add standalone thermostats, but they will still work with your main thermostat. For example, supposing I've got a zone with four radiators, and I don't want to keep going to, you can go to the app by the way, which I'll get to, but supposing you don't want to keep go grab your phone, or you don't want to keep going back to your main thermostat, it's quite easy to stick one of these, again, it's, it's wireless, stick that on the wall, again it fixes to the wall, in the zone you want. You bind that to be the temperature sensor for the zone, and then supposing, you know, it's now displaying, it's 22 and a half, it may be, maybe that's a set temperature, but I just want to override it. I may, I may just be there for half an hour and think, right, okay, I'll override that. I just turn it up. If I turn it the first time, it tells me what the set point was for that zone. If I turn it again, I can now override it. So supposing I set that to something silly, like 28, that's now overriding, but it'll over, only override until the next time setting. So for example, that's now the bedroom. It's now telling me it's set to 28 degrees because I just set it to 28. It's got a little clock there to tell me until the next timed schedule. So it's already recognized that that's the temperature for that set, for, for that zone. And it's done what it needs to do. But I could cancel it from there. I could cancel the override. But if I don't, that's the temperature till 9.50. I'm going to cancel that, come back out. So that's how you'd set up your zone. So supposing, oh, by the way, they, they do another one of these that looks um, a bit square, which I think is uh, the D, D, does it? DTS, I think something 92, I believe. Um, I think so. I'm going to be booking it. Hang on, yes, I have. So it's the... Yeah, DTS 92, which is a square one. It looks a bit more old fashioned, but it's got all the same facilities to override the, temp the temperature locally, but also you've got an eco button uh, to the side that will allow you to do it for a time. For a time, for instance, you may want to override it for three hours. You'd hit the eco button, you set it for the temperature you want and the length of time that you want it to be at. And then it will go back. So it's just more more functionality from the local zone. It also also has a an on off button, so you can completely turn the the radiators in that zone on and off locally without going back to your main controller, and all until the next time schedule. Just all really really handy if you don't want to keep going back to the main controller and you want really good tailored local control of the heat. So you got your zones easily set up, and the schedule is. Um, easy to set up. You just come in to here and to that particular zone and you go edit schedule. Uh, again a warning I may explode. Okay. For instance I've got um, three time settings. You can have up to six changes of, of schedule within the 24 hour period and you can change it by day or by week. It's quite neat. So for instance supposing I make a change here from uh, 6.30 to 6.35 which I can't do because that goes in 10 minutes, but say 6.40. Um, so I say, yeah, I want to do that. Let's change that to 6.40. I now want to change it, make it the same on every day. So I go copy, and I can either I copy the weekly schedule to another room, in other words, to another zone, or to the, every day for that same zone, or individually. So I can tick every day, 
well not every day it's quite neat it's very easy some of these thermostats are quite complicated or really sluggish to get around but that's quite neat the way you can do that so come back out so that's your basic settings for your zones um, that's how you'd edit the schedule one thing to note is that <laughs> It doesn't tell you when it's calling for heat. Just about any other thermostat you use will come up with a little flame, you know it's calling for heat. For some reason, they don't do that on this. It would be really nice if against each zone, you'd know whether or not it's calling for heat. Your radiator, your, you may hear your boiler come on and you're not sure which zone is calling for heat. You know, you may think, oh, I didn't need it come on. Why is it come on? Well, you've got to hunt around to see what the temperature is for its target and what it is now and work out is it calling for heat and is it not so it would have been nice if they do that the other thing they have quite nice they what they call quick actions you go into your quick actions by default they have an economy action which will reduce all your temperatures by three degrees you wait all these obviously you can set the the parameters yourself but this but this is how it comes by default away is set to 16 degrees so you could just you know if you're just going out but you don't want it to be too cold your day off supposing you got a schedule for when you're working in the week or whatever but you happen to have a day off and you want the heat to be higher than it would be normally you just hit the day off so you're having a day off so it will just override the schedule for that day you can quickly turn all your zones off with that button and you can have one custom one custom action. I don't know why they've limited limited to one. I mean, they've even got space for more. Would have been really neat. Um, but yeah, you can only have one custom action. So I, I've just had a. I just set mine a high temperature for all zones. So how does that work? So you come in and supposing I want to go to economy. I want it's a little bit hot, but I don't want it to off altogether. And I don't want to go to each zone and turn each one down by three degrees, which is a bit laborious. I just say, okay, I go to economy and let's turn everything down by three degrees. So all those set temperatures are now three degrees lower. But what and if you want to cancel that quick action, I just tap it again. But one nice thing is if you hold your finger down over it, you can actually set how long you want it to be in play for so you don't have to remember to go and to turn the quick action off and now one thing it doesn't do is geolocation so it, it won't turn your heating off on and off by whether you're in or out of a target zone around your home but there is a way around that um there is an app called um I think it's I T T T no it's I I F T T T and their applets are compatible with um, Evo Home and so you can actually do that via their applets and there actually are some other there are other quick actions you can set up on your phone using that the app I F T T T but I have to say I tried it and it didn't actually work maybe I was doing something obviously wrong I'm not sure I, I'm going to go over the app later but I think that's, that's most of the, the, the obvious functionality of, of the system covered there. Uh, if I just quickly go into the settings, you can change your device settings for the idle screen, your back, you know, obviously everything you'd expect, languages, day and time, just normal stuff, uh, room settings. So you can reorder um, which zones show up first on your home screen, reset your schedule, all the all things you'd like to do your Wi-Fi make sure your Wi-Fi is connected so you can use your app it will still work if you are not connected to the internet no worries there um, but um, yeah if you, you are connected you can use the app as well um, yeah optimization so you can have an optimum start optimum stop what is that well I'm glad you asked me so optimum start is it, it will start your You've got a temperature, say, set for 7 o'clock, 24 degrees. So at about 6 o'clock, it will start your heating slowly, and it will start to see over time how long it takes your heating, your room to get to that set temperature. I mean, if you've got a really nice system, it won't take long, so it's not a big deal. But if it's a sluggish system, especially if it's really cold out, it's going to see how long it takes, and in the future, it knows how, long, how much in advance of your set time to start the heating so it's at the set temperature at that time optimum stop 
uh, means it will turn off, it will turn down the heating by about half a degree, about half an hour before you set it to to, uh, to actually turn off um, to save you a little bit of money there. And uh, any faults are logged. One thing I will say about the Wi-Fi, I did find you have this too close to the router, um, you, or you, whatever you're using for your Wi-Fi, you might have a Wi-Fi dish or whatever standalone. It doesn't seem to like it. It keeps disconnecting. But move it a few feet, a few, a few yards, meters away, no problem. It seems to keep the signal really well. So that just about covers um, everything you can do. I mean, it, it really is um, a great system. And there's so, lots of things you can add to make it even better if you want to spend the money. None of them are cheap. The other thing it does do, it supports open therm, which is... Um, which help, which is a way of the system talking to the boiler to modulate it. So instead of firing up the boiler and the boiler immediately trying to get the water to the temperature you've set the boiler to reach immediately. So if you set it to say 65, 60 degrees, I think for um, for efficient use of the the gas, it will go straight, try and get straight to temper. But using open therm, it will if you if it knows if that say for instance there's only one radiator calling for heat it knows it it doesn't need to be that that um that hot maybe 45 degrees or something like that will be enough to get it to the temperature that you've set it you may it may only try and be going up by half a degree but the boiler of course has to support open therm um, and you'd need another wireless module uh to to relay the command to the boiler uh, for it, but not a lot of boilers out there, unfortunately, at the moment, do support that. So, but it is a nice feature, and it does save money if you can use it. Um, it does do underfloor heating, and it does do your hot water cylinder. It really is a nice system. And um, now I'll show you the app. So that's the app open. Um, you can have it. You can. You've got to go to the Eva Home Connected website to set up your account. Um, and once you've done that, you can log on via the app. The you can have different locations. So this is set to my location, and there's all my radiators are there, or my zones, I should say, and um, it will tell me exactly what's on the main screen on the controller. Uh, the set temperature and the current temperature and you've got all the same functionality to go in and change anything there so I could go in there and change the set temperature um, so my target temperature is at, my, at moment 22 and a half I go go in and just tell it to uh, something silly again let's go nice roasty 27 and a half and then I would go down to the clock symbol and tell it how long to do it. And so I'll say um, until 8.30 and then I'll activate that. And so that target temperature is now active till um, is it? the time I just set. So 27.5 degrees is the new set temperature. And I come back to here and there already it's showing 27.5 is the new target. It's got a little symbol for what it's supposed to be the phones it's telling me it's just been set by the app of course you could have this on as many devices as you want and um, you've got all the same functionality if I come back out um, I can turn the whole system off there um, that's uh, your custom settings my day off well I never get a day off if I'm away blah 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 and the economy mode is down there I can get, um, if you've got a security system, Honeywell do a security system, it would show up there. The weather is always cold in London. And just basic settings. So it's quite nice, you can do everything. But you can't have it turn off if it's if you're out of a certain location, as you can do with a lot of other systems, or the expensive ones. Given the money for this, you'd expect it to do that. But as I said, there is an app called IFTTT where you can set up your own applets and I have my applet set up to control my Evo home. If I enter an area and you set the area 
turn on and then if I exit, uh, turn off. Uh, so I haven't really tested it much, but the one time I tried it, it didn't actually work. And there are a lot of other uh, applets that will allow you to do all sorts of things with the Eva Home, but mm, you know, nothing you, that's, that's uh, a major uh, up, upgrade on the whole system, other than it adds a bit of functionality that actually should be in the system itself. So that's my overview um, of the Eva Home system. Something I think is absolutely fantastic, but horrendously expensive. So I can understand if people are not going to buy it on the basis. But if you have a lot of radiators, if you are very fussy about your heating, you have a um, you know a really big uh, residence. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, it is the future in uh, radiator systems and wet systems. And I, I really couldn't go back to um, normal TRVs or a normal system. So. Thoroughly recommended.